How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is option B, high level biochemistry, volume 10, which is the second part of the biological pigment section. Let's go. So option B9, biochemistry, the understandings, applications and skills. Again, there's quite a few of them. It was quite a detailed section of the course. So make sure you have a look at them so you know what you need to know for this last bit. Okay, cytochromes. Cytochromes are a group of protein molecules that contain the heme prosthetic group and they're responsible for electron transport during aerobic respiration and photosynthesis. The reaction involves the Fe2 plus ion in a series of oxidation and reduction reactions as those Fe2 plus ions both accept and pass on electrons. Reduction, accepting, passing on, oxidation. In cytochromes, the ion of the heme group converts from 2 plus to 3 plus as it undergoes those reactions. So we can come up with a half equation for this where we have Fe2+, plus, which is in equilibrium with Fe3+, plus, plus an electron. And depending upon the reaction, it can either undergo reduction or oxidation. Anthocyanins are the bright colours of flowers, fruits, berries and vegetables, and they're, called, they're, they're caused by a group of biological pigments called anthocyanins. Now, anthocyanins are soluble in water, and they're described as aromatic compounds because of the presence of two fused benzene rings and then also a phenyl group. Be careful with the way that you label the phenyl group. Remember the two benzene rings, they're stuck together, and then a benzene functional group is a phenyl group. The variety of colours produced by these anthocyanins depends upon the pH of the solution and also the metal ion to which the anthocyanin forms a complex ion. Now the pH can change the colour of plants and you might have seen um, people in, in your street who add in either lime to make it basic or an acidic fertiliser to change the colour of their plants. So that means that anthocyanins can act as acid base indicators based upon their pH. So red cabbage extract can be red in an acidic solution and then turn blue in a basic solution, and then in extremes it can turn yellow. And we can represent that using this little equation below. So we have our acid form of the anthocyanin, which we've called HA, which we describe as being protonated. And then it's in equilibrium with its basic component, which we've said is blue. So if we put these compounds in an acid, then they're going to be on to the left hand side and be red. If we put it in a basic solution, it's going to be blue. And we can represent the conjugate acid as A- and then the acid as HA. Remember we say that the HA form is protonated and the A- form is the basic. Carotenes are coloured biological pigments produced in living organisms and their molecules have extensive alternating single and double carbon to carbon bonds, which means that they're a conjugated system. So for instance, retinol, vitamin A, is a conjugated system because it contains carbon to carbon double and carbon to carbon single alternating bonds. Now, the larger the systems, the the light, they absorb light of lower energy, the smaller the conjugated systems, they absorb light of higher energy. But remember we've got that absorbance and reflection going on, so that changes the colour of the compounds. Now the ability of these carotenes to absorb visible light makes them sensitive to photooxidation, which means that they will react with light. So they're often used as antioxidants. So photosynthetic pigments in trapping light during photosynthesis and we need to be able to, to describe their function. So photosynthesis is a complex process that involves many pigments and proteins known as the photosystem. The light energy absorbed by some of the chlorophyll molecules is passed on to other pigments which initiates oxidation reactions. So we have a light energy that shines onto a plant and then the chlorophyll absorbs some of that light. But then there are different pigments in the plant which can pass on electrons from one pigment to the other. Eventually those electrons are returned to the chlorophyll molecule. 
Now, once we have those electrons returned to chlorophyll, we have what we call short-term reducing power. The chlorophyll molecule has these extra electrons that it can then use to do some work and some work in the plant. So that those electrons are then put to use in the photosynthetic system where we can use those electrons to convert carbon dioxide to carbohydrates. And the way and why this can work is there is a difference in the oxidation number between CO2 and the carbohydrates that are produced from photosynthesis. Remember, photosynthesis is produce, produces sugars. So for instance, glucose C6H12O6, and that can come from carbon dioxide. So if we have a look at the oxidation numbers, the oxidation number of carbon in CO2 is minus four. It's plus four, sorry, it should say plus four and the carbon is zero. So here we can use that reducing power, those extra electrons, to reduce the carbon dioxide into the sugar. The analysis of pigments can be completed via using TLC or thin layer chromatography. And what we can do here is if we get a pigment from a plant, usually that pigment will contain a number of different types of molecules that we need to separate. Now we can separate using TLC or paper chromatography based on their attraction to either a stationary phase or how well they dissolve in a mobile phase. So we get a spot of our sample or a small sample and we place it on the origin of our TLC plate or our paper chromatography plate and then we separate that using a solvent. So our sample could separate into three components and those components could be colored because we know that these pigments are generally absorb visible light. We can then analyze what those components are by looking at their RF values. The solvent front moves a certain distance and then all of the components move depending upon their attractions to the stationary phase or the mobile phase. The RF value is calculated by, use, by measuring the distance moved by the component and dissolving that by the distance moved by the, by the solvent front. So we have just a simple ratio to work out the RF values of these components. What's the difference between a paper or TLC plate? Well, a TLC plate contains a thin layer of absorbent particles such as alumina or silica, which are absorbed onto a glass plate, and it just helps us with resolution. And by resolution, we mean the separating of the spots. Now, if you are planning on going to the exam, this could be asked as a question to calculate some RF values. So make sure you take a ruler into the exam with you and then use the ruler to measure. So volume 10, some top tips. Um, as a chemist, I, I've found that section of the course particularly challenging and make sure you use the data book and know what structures are in the data book to help you out. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more. And if I'm a terrible biologist, please let me know.